what's up everyone? It's Dave here at Drumio, and on this lesson I want to talk about how to sound more like Phil Rudd when you're playing ACDC music. Now I've seen a lot of ACDC rock drum lessons, in fact I even taught one a few years ago, but I promise you this one's going to be a little bit different. Over the last two years I've been playing in an ACDC tribute band and I have studied Phil Rudd's parts and Chris Slade's parts under a microscope and I have noticed a lot of mistakes I've seen drummers make when they're playing ACDC songs. So I'm going to show you how to avoid that and how to sound more like Phil Rudd. And if you like this, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and like this video and let's get to it. All right, so the first tip I'm going to talk about is use the right gear. Now this might seem obvious, but you don't know how many ACDC cover songs I've seen drummers post on YouTube where they're using a fusion kit or an 18 inch bop bass drum or they're on an electronic drum set and they're just using the wrong setting on their module. So this one, like I said, it seems obvious, but use big drums. Now what I'm using here isn't a sonar kit. It isn't Phil Rudd's signature kit, but what I chose is a really heavy Pearl CZX kit. The toms are power toms. If you pick this kit up, it is literally very, very heavy. And just listen to this. Like that just sounds really, really beefy. And I love the power of the toms. You gotta think about the song Thunderstruck. You want thunderous toms here. You want a kick drum that hits you in the chest and a snare drum that slaps you in the face. And another thing is your cymbals. If you're using dark energy cymbals or a nice Manhattan ride, throw those out and get yourself some nice heavy rock cymbals. Now the cymbals I'm using are actually the ones that Phil Rudd uses, which is the Peisty 2002s. They sound great for rock, they're nice and thick. You don't have to get Peisties though, you can get whatever you want, just make sure they're rock cymbals. Make sure they're not too thin, they poke through and they have a good sustain. Just take a listen to these. And the last thing to consider is your ride cymbal. When was the last time you heard an ACDC song where Phil's riding on his cymbal and you can hear that ping? It doesn't really happen. So make sure you have a ride cymbal that you can really lay into and it has a nice wash to it. This is the 24 inch Big Beat 2002 and listen to how it sounds when I dig into it using the edge of my stick. So as you can see, my kit sounds loud, it sounds aggressive, it sounds in your face, and that is exactly what you need for ACDC. That brings me to my next point, which is play loud and confidently. ACDC is like the quintessential rock and roll sound where the drums and the guitar and the vocals are at the forefront. Unlike a lot of music today where there could be sometimes over 50 tracks on a single song, back then the drums didn't need to fight for their space in the mix. They were very, very prevalent. So when you're at your rehearsal or where you're in your jam room or if you're playing an ACDC cover gig, play loud and confidently. Don't play like this. No, 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 play like this. If you're gonna make a mistake, play a loud mistake. Remember, this is rock and roll. Let the guitarists and the vocalists turn up to you in this situation rather than you turning down to them. Now this brings me to my next point, which is master your kick and snare. Now it's no secret that ACDC beats are fairly simple. You know, kick on the one and three for the most part, snare on the two and four. So why is it when Phil Rudd plays it, it just sounds so good? And I believe it's that last 10% of that groove that really separates, you know, the regular drummers from the Phil Rudds or the pros. Now here's an example of playing that money beat or that ACDC beat you know, just at that 80% mark. It's there, you can hear it, you're playing the correct notes, but it doesn't really hit you where you need to. So instead, take some time and really dig into your bass drum. Make it hit you in the chest. What I'm doing here is I'm putting a lot of weight on my pedal, I'm also burying my beater. Shh! But it creates a really good punch, listen to this. Oh! <laughs> 
Now with your backbeat, you wanna make sure it's loud and consistent. You know, it's not fusion music here, this is rock and roll. So don't worry about getting a little ghost note before or after your backbeat. Just worry about getting a nice, loud, consistent snare crack, just like this. <laughs> Lastly, the rim shot. You have to get comfortable with playing rim shots. It's gonna set you apart. And if you can play that backbeat with a rim shot, especially when it really matters in the courses, you're gonna sound way better. Something like this. Practice this beat in multiple tempos. This is a beat that you're gonna be playing a lot of if you're playing in an ACDC tribute band, so it's not okay to just practice it at one tempo. Practice it 90 beats per minute, practice it 95, 100, 127. You know, all these tempos just to get so comfortable with them. Another tip is to practice these beats with crash shots on the downbeat and crash shots on the snare, on the backbeat, something like this. and a shot on the backbeat. Now the reason why I say practice those is you're gonna be playing shots on the downbeat and on the backbeat quite often in many ACDC songs, so get comfortable with that. Lastly, get comfortable with playing pushes on the and of four. This is another thing that's very, very consistent in a lot of ACDC songs. That sounds like this. So if you can get really comfortable and get that beat to sound really good with the crashes on the one, the crashes on the backbeat, the crashes on the push, with a solid bass drum and a good crack, you're that much closer to sounding like Phil Rudd. Okay, so this next tip is probably the most important tip in this whole lesson, and that is it's all about the hi-hats. The one thing I learned in playing all of these ACDC songs is the kick and snare are where that groove lives, but what differentiates song after song after song is what Phil does on the hi-hats. There's a lot of little nuances that a lot of drummers don't listen for when they're playing an ACDC song. And I see a lot of drummers just play regular eighth notes on their hi-hat like this. for every ACDC song, but you have to use your ears and listen to the texture that's going on in that song so you can make the right decision, change what your hi-hats are doing to sound like that song. Now one of the most obvious ones is Thunderstruck. Let's take a listen to that and really focus on what the hi-hats are doing here. Check it out. Okay, let's listen to the hi-hats here. All you're hearing is hi-hats and guitar, so it's pretty easy. Listen to that pulse. So what's happening there is Phil isn't just playing eighth notes like this. He's got some sort of life with that. So if you want to play Thunderstruck like Phil Rudd does, don't just rock eighth notes consistently like you might do for other songs. Put some life into it like this. And you're gonna notice as you listen to more ACDC songs, each song has a different timbre or different feel to the hi-hats. And that single subtlety will completely change the feel and integrity of the song. Now lastly, pay attention to how loose and how tight the hi-hats are. It's not enough just to play the beats and the parts correctly. You have to apply the right pressure to imitate the sound. Don't just put your foot down and think that's it. It's closed or it's open. There are more than two zones to your hi-hat. So I recommend getting really comfortable with the different timbres of your hi-hat. So press down really hard on your hi-hat, loosen it up a bit, and just become comfortable with what your foot needs to do pressure-wise and what your hand needs to do in order to get different sounds on your hi-hat. So once you got your hi-hat game under control, the next tip I'm gonna talk about is learn the correct shots and fills. 
Now because there's so much space in the ACDC songs, every fill and every shot you play is super important. So take the time to learn the subtleties. Now fortunately on Drumeo.com we have oh, over 20 ACDC songs fully transcribed with every single shot and fill that Phil Rudd played inside of Drumeo. So you can use those resources. If not though, just listen to the song, make some notes yourself. It's really important that you play those shots correctly. Now a great example of this is the intro to Shoot to Thrill. There is such an iconic fill in that song that if you don't play it right, the audience is going to know it. In fact, I've done shows where I've seen audience members air drum that fill. So let me play Shoot to Thrill for you so you can see what I mean. And if you're a huge ACDC fan in there, tell me in the comments below if you're air drumming to this as I play it. Alright, here's a tip for you drummers out there who are wanting to play in a cover band or an ACDC tribute band, and that is to use tracks. Now obviously Phil Rudd didn't use tracks, but they had the money and the machine behind them to actually bring cannons and a massive bell to their show. But as a drummer, playing ACDC cover shows, there's not really a venue I've played in that allows me to bring a cannon in, unfortunately. You want to pop the trunk and roll the windows down, please? So we got to improvise. So I highly recommend you spend the time to learn how to add tracks to your kit. Now I have a pretty simple setup here, I'm just using a Roland TM2 which is nice, it just fits right underneath my hi-hats here. And I have a little rim trigger right here which Roland also makes. Whatever works for you though, there's so many different options there. But check out this, this is the bell for Hell's Bells. How are you going to play Hell's Bells without that bell sound? And you can't rely on your Angus or your Malcolm or your Brian to hit those shots. You're the drummer, you're sitting in the seat, why not you take the initiative, get tracks going however you want to do it, but get that bell in there. Another track that you can't go without as an ACDC drummer is this. A cannon! You need to have a cannon for for those about to rock. You cannot play for those about to rock without a cannon. And this cannon is great. There's so many WAV files that you can find on Google for a cannon sound. Now, in this lesson, I have included both that bell wave and this cannon wave for you to download so you can add them to your track. But if you want, go and find your own. I just, I think I put two or three cannons together that I found on Google and it sounded great. Especially when you play your floor tom and your kick drum at the same time. Listen to this. Now the last tip is not really a tip, it's just a recommendation for you drummers out there, especially those who are wanting to get into a tribute band or a cover band, and that is to watch a lot of their live shows. You know, ACDC has a ton of great live concerts on YouTube which you can watch, and a lot of times they play songs a little bit faster, or they change a section here or there, or they have a really cool outro that you might want to imitate for your live show as well. A great example of this is Whole lot of Rosie. I can't listen to Whole Lotta Rosie, the album version anymore after I've played it live and watched their live version because their live version is so much faster, there's so much energy, and my goodness, it's like the better way to play the song in my opinion. So take your time, check out some of their live concerts, and write some notes down to bring to your band. So I hope these tips helped you, and if they did, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys all later.